as a new athlete, I have one team to my past here is to bring me to office space, and again, I'll see you tomorrow on the But we're not going to do that uh, just yet, okay? What we're trying to do, or what we're going to do today, is try to bring space much closer to our home, and bring space down here on Earth. The field of space science, of science and technology is a very dynamic field that is ever changing. By nature, it is always involved with new discoveries, new achievements, and new innovations coming every day. This makes science and technology very fascinating and profitable for students, for scientists, and also for the general public. However, there are certain areas of space of science that is always in the forefront of innovation and pushing the limits of human knowledge into ever expanding heights. Among those areas is one that is very much close to my heart, and that's the field of space science and technology. As early as five years old, I knew that my career would be in space. Okay? I was, my, my mother was a biologist, my father was a communicator and a chemist. But, so when I was eight, I was taught how to use a microscope, how to count slides. By 11, I was taught how to splice DNA. By 16, I was taught how to use all sorts of gadgets in a biology lab. But that never got me interested. I knew, right, as uh, early as five, that my field would be in space. Okay. Okay. Anyone else seen or know this? So this image is known as the Hubble Deep Field. So this was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope almost two decades ago. And what the Hubble Space Telescope did was to look or to point the telescope at a very dark patch in the sky about the size of the eye hole of the Lincoln, okay, Buddha Sankara, okay? So it was so dark that there was nothing that was visible with the naked eye. For several weeks, all the Hubble Space Telescope did was to look at this patch and collect all the light coming from there. And what the result is this a, a astounding image. What makes it more astonishing is that each point that you see in this image is not a star. Each point that you see in this image is a galaxy containing billions and billions of stars. So imagine that very small patch of star. You have thousands of galaxies containing billions of stars. It's truly mind-boggling how fast the universe is. How fast the universe is. It's a very small patch of sky. So what else is out there that we don't know? What else is out there that we haven't seen? So through this simple image, we can see how small and insignificant we are in the grand scheme of the universe. Astrophenos are four high exposure to space, of course, and its wonders are quite limited. Of course, we all underwent that phase where we were interested in space. Okay? Uh, just a raise of hands. When you were young, who among you were interested in space? Okay. Who among you wanted to go to space? <laughs> okay, last. Who among you needs space? <laughs> so, it shows you how our, our exposure to space is very much limited. Okay? So, as we grew older, our ambition begins to our our ambition to become a scientist or to become an astronomer or an astronaut became much more distant like the stars themselves. They were replaced with more down to earth and like uh, down to earth like those and issues. What we fail to realize is that space is actually much closer than we think. Like water and energy and electricity, space systems and its products have become embedded in our modern society that their benefits go largely unnoticed. Except when they fail to function as So this lack of public appreciation and understanding space is common. Uh, it's common occurrence in other countries. Here in the Philippines, the most, most common misconception is that when you talk about space, it's always about sending people to the moon and sending people to Mars. So one question that I get usually asked by people when we're working in space programs, why space? In a country like the Philippines, which is beset with all sorts of problems, that economic social economic problems, and social problems, even that sometimes political problems, why do we need to better the space and space technology? Is that it just a waste of money? The push for the National Space Program has met with numerous criticisms, and saying that we should, our meager resources should not be allocated for that, but rather we should focus on solving our problems, like ending poverty, 
hunger, helping our fellow countrymen. However, what we fail to realize is that space is not only about astronauts and exploration. In 2015, the United Nations contracted this seven, uh, sustainable development goal. So there are 17 SDGs that each of the country, these are key agenda, agenda items that each of the country should strive to achieve by 2030. Now, in the UN, there is an office known as the UN Office for Outer Space Affairs, which is based in Vienna. And what did the UNOSA do is try to see or assess how space would affect each of these 17 SDGs. And what they found out is that it's not only one, not only a few of them, but all 17 SDGs can be affected by space technology, either directly or indirectly. And they, indeed, this shows that space can help in solving problems and providing solutions to issues in our modern day society. So, where do we use space? <coughs> the reality is that most Filipinos, such as ourselves, do not realize that space has numerous applications in our everyday life. And most of the time, we're not even aware that we're using space technology. Who among you likes to cook? Who among you likes to eat? Uh, <laughs> so, when you cook, when you're, when you're in the kitchen, and you look at these uh, all this cookware, that is fat, non-stick fat. We use the non-stick fat for the that one by main to cook so that when you fry an egg, it doesn't get stuck with a fat itself. It's much easier to eat. What we don't realize is that this kind of technology has been evolved from space. Okay? It was actually used as floating for spacecraft, but over time, over the decades, it will trickle down to our homes, it will trickle down to our nation. And there are lots of examples of that. We have uh, we have the non-stick band, we have your memory foam mattresses, even the MRI and CT scans that we use in the hospitals are all evolutions coming from space. So space, for all its technological benefits, is actually not beyond our reach. It has become ubiquitous and is regarded as an indispensable asset of modern day society. One of the biggest applications of space is in terms of communication. In the Philippines, we're an archipelago of more than 7,600 islands. Some of these islands are large, like Luzon, some of them are small and remote. This makes communication a very big problem. Most telecommunication companies do not provide services to remote areas, especially if it's not economically viable for them. In addition, the logistical problem of putting up cell phone towers and partner discharges are connect connecting with these remote communities. But with the use of satellites, you can virtually connect all of our islands with a single satellite, and in turn, all Filipinos together with one another. So satellites even has the added benefit of providing teleservices such as telemedicine or teleeducation. Here, you can have a doctor, let's say in St. Louis or in BGH, diagnose a patient, let's say in Barangay Pagasa, in the middle of this practice in the rest of the So, hindi na mangyari yung sinasabi natin, tatawid pa ng itong mundo para lang makakuha ng gamot only to find out what is the only thing that was needed was to drink this makes, this makes public service very easily accessible to more Filipinos, especially those in the remote areas and marginalized communities. Satellites also provide us with the ability to monitor every square meter of the land, whether it's land, sea, or any part of the country. Right now, we have the technology that from space you can look, let's say, at a patch of land, as you have a rice farm or a rice farm or farm land in central Luzon. And determine, based on that image alone, how many cabanas of rice can be harvested. It's not only how many cabanas of rice can be harvested, but also how many days left before you can harvest this rice. And to some extent, you can even determine what is the health status of that plant. Is it affected by insect infestation and so on? So imagine you can do that not just with rice, but also with all sorts of agriculture, crops, animals, even fisheries. So having that kind of information to our decision makers is very vital in ensuring our food security. Through satellites, we can also determine the state of our natural forest cover, the state of our seas, our rivers, and even pollution levels. We can use, of course, we use satellites for weather monitoring, and it's a vital capability in our country that is always beset by diagnosed on a regular basis. Which brings me to the next application. The Philippines is a smorgasbord of disasters. We have typhoons, 
earthquakes, landslides, flooding, and a whole lot more in their case. One of the most devastating disasters we have is, of course, like in the Atlanta of In the aftermath of Yolanda, towns and cities were cut off from the rest of the country. All communications were down and no one knew the extent of the damage. But with the use of satellites, we were able to image air areas affected by Typhoon Yolanda. We were able to communicate with them using satellite phones and have the information necessary for disaster response. Time and again, satellites have helped to save numerous lives by using and analyzing their images in order to create an effective disaster response. Okay, another show of hands. Who among you has a smartphone? What most of you might not realize is that when you're using smartphones, you're actually using space and more, especially on one specific application. So what happens in your smartphone, you have this app. Signals coming from two or more satellites. When you turn on the location services, we receive signals coming from three or more satellites from the global positioning system, more commonly known as GPS. Okay? So based on this signal, your phone computes are exactly made from here on Earth, which in turn can help you in driving from the location or even navigating the traffic. And this and similar technologies exist, not just for mobile applications, for cars, but also for ships, even for aircrafts. This makes GPS and other similar systems very useful for geotagging, georeferencing, for various applications. Combined communications, imaging, remote sensing, and georeferencing makes space technology also very useful for surveillance and security. One of the reasons why we keep using islands in the West Coast is we don't have a capability to monitor the area. We're basically blind to what is happening in the West Coast. Our Navy and our Coast Guards does not have enough assets to control our territorial and internal borders. But with the use of satellites, we can easily identify potential threats and immediately make an appropriate response. Thus, this makes space very vital for our national security and ensuring the territorial integrity of our country. Lastly, space is unique among the different branches of science because it has an inspirational aspect. It has an inspirational aspect that goes for all people of all ages. Anyone can look up in the sky and be amazed at the numerous stars that exist. This makes space very relatable to the ordinary person. It's even easier to explain compared to other areas, let's say particle physics. It's much more complicated. Anyone can set up a telescope in the street, uh, look up in the sky, and that's it. That's how we try to see the beauty of space. Space is actually, for me, to encourage more of our young students to go into pursue or to go and pursue what we call STEM careers. The inspiring beauty of space escapes no one. And what is more important is that what is more important to realize is that all of us are all under one sky. In summary, space not only increases our understanding of the earth and the universe, but also helps in solving the problem of space and improve our lives or improve the lives of our citizens. It has numerous applications to the Philippines, uh, whether it's addressing various social economic problems, social benefits, and so on. So these issues would have significant, significant benefits for us in the long term. While it is true that having a space program is costly, not having one is, most, is more costlier for the country in the long run. Hence, I, the work that we're doing right now is pushing for the Philippine Space Agency is something that everyone should look forward to. I encourage everyone to dream big and reach for the stars. Space is our future. It's no longer a question of if, but rather a question of when can we begin exploring new worlds outside of the Earth. By reaching for the stars, we can boldly go where no Filipino has gone before. At the same time, it gives us an appreciation of how fragile our planet is and how important it is for us to take care of it. Take care of it. Our planet is our very own spaceship as we traverse the vast expanse of the universe. And for the moment, it's the only one we have. So in space, the sky is no longer.